Hello YouTube! I'm here! Yay! Nell is back! Um, that sounded really conceited. I don't think you're all cheering because I'm back, but I'm glad I'm back. It's been five weeks since I put a video up and I apologize. Life's been crazy, but it is for all of us, so I know you guys understand. But I'm so happy to be back! How have you all been? Great! <laughs> I hope you're well. We are doing very well um, in the last five weeks. I have opened and closed a show. Uh, Music Man was a great success and it was very fun. We had sold out audiences, I'd say most of the shows. We did 15 performances in three weeks, which was a lot and uh, really, really fun and a little bit relieved that it's done now and we can kind of get back to normal life again. I will probably do another show sometime in the next year or two. I'm not in a big hurry um, to, to jump right in, but it was great to get back on stage. So that went really well. We had family reunions. We had the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day uh, to all you Americans, and I hope you had a wonderful, safe uh, 4th. We set off fireworks as we always do. My husband goes and spends a lot of money on fireworks and really loves putting on a good show for us. So we had a wonderful time and happy Independence Day. Um, it is now July the 17th and uh, I'm just getting back down to filming. So um, I'm going to start with a little bit of a business update with Little Yellow House Crafts, my um, fabric project bags business. So if you're not interested in that, go ahead and skip maybe the next 10 minutes and then um, we'll go back in with stitching. But I wanted to address a couple of things that have come up kind of in the last week or two. First of all, a huge thank you. You guys are incredible. I cannot believe how fast these bags sell when I post them. They're gone in a matter of hours. And I think right now I have a couple little bitty bags left. They're all kind of Americana themed. Um, those haven't sold and then I have a few grime guards, but you guys are amazing. I'm I'm so grateful for your support and your encouragement. Um, I did want to address a question that someone had. Well, there's a couple of questions that I wanted to address and I felt like I should address them in a video so I can kind of explain to you what my thinking is. The first one is I've had a couple people ask about custom orders if they can place a custom request for a specific bag, whether it's one that I've already released in the past but they weren't able to get, or their own personal request. Um, my answer is not yet, and I know that's frustrating. I'm sorry for those of you who really want a specific bag and haven't been able to grab one quick enough um, when they get posted. I'm so sorry. I know that's frustrating, but the fact of the matter is I am making these currently about as fast as I am able. Um, the reality is that I'm a mom of two toddlers. <laughs> I'm a stay-at-home mom, but those of you who have toddlers or have had toddlers in the past, there's not a lot of time for me to be sequestered in my sewing room. Um, I can do it every once in a while, but about every 15 minutes I have to get up and check on the boys to make sure they're still playing okay and everyone's safe. Um, I can sew during naps, which I do, but naps vary in length from day to day. So some days I get, you know, a couple solid hours in, some days I don't. So um, there's that. And then the evenings, I have decided for my own sanity that, see, that, excuse me, that evenings are for my stitching because I wasn't cross-stitching because all I was doing was sewing and I noticed that it was making me blue. I wasn't having time to, oh, there's my husband. Hi, honey. Hi. <laughs> um, I wasn't having time to work on my stitching, which is my hobby and what I love. And so I have decided to set aside evenings for my stitching. So all of this equates to I'm sewing them as fast as I can and I still can't keep my store stocked for more than a couple hours. Um, and if I were to take custom orders at this time, that would take time, that precious sewing time that I have for my normal bags away. And I would have to charge 
a lot to, to do custom orders and I don't think that's really fair. I don't think it's fair to you to charge you that much for a bag, a little fabric bag with a zipper. Um, and it's not really fair to me because my first priority is my business, my, you know, selling them on my Facebook page. And so until we can figure something out, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to change anytime soon. I'm sewing as I can and obviously they're they're appreciated and people like them because they go so fast. So if you have thus far been unable to get a bag that you want, I'm sorry. I know that's frustrating, but at this time I can't take custom orders. I just can't. I have to have time for my own stitching and my own sewing of fi you know finishing objects and things and I just I'm not a, I'm not a corporation. I don't have seamstresses working for me and people ironing and I'm doing this all on my own. So that was a very long answer. I hope you can understand. I hope you can not give up. Um, there will be another batch posted probably in a week or two. And as always, I will give a couple days notice and tell you exactly what time they're going to start posting. And all I can say is good luck. Get, get your clicking finger ready and, uh, Type away, me please, and and good luck. <laughs> that's the only way I can think of that's fair. So, um, the other question I've had has to do with me only selling on Facebook. I know not everybody uses Facebook, and there have been a few people who have asked if I'm going to open an Etsy store or if I would, you know, sell any more here on YouTube. Just you know, here's a bag. First person to comment can I'll I'll invoice them. Um, once again, I can't even keep my Facebook store stocked for more than three hours. So it's not, there's no way, there's no way I can be selling on more than one platform. I just don't have the inventory yet. I am hopeful, this is a weird thing to hope for, but I'm kind of hopeful that eventually the fervor will die down a bit. <laughs> that sounds so weird. Please keep buying my bags, but I'm hoping eventually once people, you know, are able to get a few, then it won't be so panicky. Yeah, get it now, get it now. And I'm hoping if that happens, that I'm able to start building up a nice inventory of bags that are available. And if that happens, then I will look into opening a secondary selling platform, whether on Etsy or, or we'll, we'll have to see. But right now, I can't even keep my store on Facebook stocked. So again, I apologize if you're not on Facebook and are feeling sad about that. My suggestion there is make a friend. Make a friend who has Facebook. Use a daughter or a, or a friend or a husband who has a Facebook account. Um, and uh, I will add them to the group. I don't do a lot of checks to make, make sure people are stitchers. So they can, they can join the group and I'll approve them. And then they can claim a bag on your behalf. And then as long as I get, you know, a message from that account saying, I claimed this on behalf of this person, and maybe you send me an email saying, this person claimed a bag for me, this is my PayPal email, we can work it out. We'll make it happen. So you don't have to have a Facebook account, but you just need a friend who does. Um, so that's the other question is right now Facebook's the only place I can do it. I did promise that I'd give you a little bit of a teaser for what is coming up in the next batch. And so I thought about showing you little peaks of the fabric, but I think that kind of ruins the fun. I like having a little secret and you not knowing what they look like. However, I'm going to tell you the titles of the next eight designs that are coming out in my next batch. So you're, so you can think about the titles and imagine what it might look like. So here's the next batch that are releasing. And these are all kind of having to do with fandoms. Okay. Um, the first one is going to be called classic star Wars. So it is not star Wars, the force awakens. We're talking the 1970s, 1980s star Wars. Okay. Classic star Wars. The second one, I can't talk. The second one is Comic Book Avengers. Uh, the third one is going to be called Girl Power Superheroes. <laughs> uh, the next four all have to do with Disney. Okay, um, so the first one is the Disney Princess Sketches. Disney Princess Sketches. Uh, this, the next one, um, the second Disney one is Dark Disney Villains. <laughs> the third Disney pattern, 
which is my personal favorite and I think you guys are gonna flip. I flipped when I found this fabric. And this is this next one is what I'm gonna call a special edition fabric. This is a fabric that is not readily available in your average big box craft store fabric store. This is a fabric that I had to drive 250 miles away to source. And so because it is special edition, um, it will be $2 more per bag. Um, and it will say so on each individual photo. It will say what its price is, but you can expect them to be $2 more per bag. The fabric was a little more expensive and I had to go far away to get it, but it was so worth it. This one, are you ready? This one's called Vintage Disney Movie Posters. Vintage Disney Movie Posters. And then, sorry, I'm writing something down. I'm leaving a note for myself. And then the last of the Di the four Disney releases is also a special edition. It also is not, the fabric's not available near me. Um, so it will also be $2 more per bag. And this one is called Mickey Loves Minnie. <laughs> so those are the four Disney ones. And then the very last one in this next release um, is called Stained Glass Zelda. If you're a fan of Zelda, um, it's Stained Glass Zelda. So really quickly, one more time, classic Star Wars, comic book Avengers, girl power superheroes, Disney princess sketches, Dark Disney Villains, Vintage Disney Movie Posters, which is a special edition, Mickey Loves Minnie, which is another special edition, and Stained Glass Zelda. So let that percolate in your mind. Um, get excited. Those will be releasing very soon. Um, and then after that, there will be another batch that I already have fabric ready for that will be some more different special interests, not necessarily movies or TV shows or or video games, but other special interests. So you'll you'll hear more about that in the future. That's enough about my business. Thanks guys for your support and your love. You're amazing. I hope you're all happy with your bags, those of you who have purchased them. And uh, keep an eye out, there's more coming. Let's talk about stitching. This is really shameful. Remember how last time I told you that my stitching had kind of fallen off the radar? Well, that was even before I started, a sh I started the run of a show and Quite frankly, the entire three weeks of Music Man, I did not stitch a single thing. No cross-stitching happened through the entire run, and that was just all of my evenings. I was gone at performances during the day. I was tired or I was working on sewing bags. I didn't stitch at all. Um, since the show has ended in the last two weeks, I have stitched, but I've only stitched on one project. And that was because it was coming up on Independence Day and I felt like stitching something patriotic. So I worked on my um, Barbara Anna Designs Long May She Wave. And I'll insert a picture here. So this is the, the project that I've been working on. And if you recall, last time I was working on it, I only had like the crow and Uncle Sam and the flag done and I'm happy to say I'm almost finished with it. It's not quite done yet, but here it is. So, sorry it's a little wrinkly, it's been on a Q-snap. And you can see my glittery princess, um, oh, it's a ballerina bell, ballerina Disney princess, and it's Belle, who's my favorite Disney princess. So thank you, Julie. Again, that was a gift from Julie Connell. This is from Nifty Needle Nannies which is her story, you all know that. Um, and this is where I am. I finished all the wording down below, Long May She Wave, as well as that bunting and uh, the stars and bells, and I did do the back stitching on those. I finished the flower here in the middle. I finished Betsy Ross and her little dog. Um, I have not put in, there's a long thread and a needle kind of going up this way. I haven't put that in because it's all back stitch and straight stitch. And I didn't want, because it was big, long lengths of straight stitch and stuff, I didn't want to risk it getting pulled in the Q-snap. So I'll put that in last. This little cartouche right here that says 1777, this is all done one over one, um, petite point. Which, this is my first experience stitching one over one, and oh my gosh, it was awful. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do your mirabilias and your elegant ladies, with their skin one over one. It could possibly have been awful because I was stitching mostly this white, this off-white color onto off-white fabric, one over one. 
It didn't take me very long. It's not a real big piece, but oh, I hated it. I did not enjoy it. So I'm not sure when I get back to working on my blue bride, I don't know if I'm gonna do her skin one over one. I don't know if it's worth it to me. I mean, it does look beautiful, but oh, hated it. We'll see. Um, so I did that. And then I went up to the top and I'm working on this big top portion, um, 17 and on this side it'll say 76. And it's mostly a lot of this light blue stitching, which is kind of boring, but I finished the eagle and the stars on this side and there's the same on this side. There's like a swirl and some stars and then it'll say 76, like I said. So that's my Barbara Anna Designs Long May She Wave. It's gonna be finished, I would say probably in the next week. Um, I work on it in the evenings and I love it when it gets finished um, since that's the only thing that I have to show you let's talk a little bit about my plans for stitching because now that that's almost done um, I need to get back on the wagon <laughs> with my Brooks Books Advent Animals I never finished the the last of my May um, I showed you in my last video, I had finished Cassie Cow and I was almost done with Rascal Raccoon. Rascal Raccoon is still in the exact same state I showed it to you last time. So he still needs to be finished up and I need to finish June's too and I need to work on July's too. I'm, I'm quite a bit behind because of the show and the business. And that's okay. I'm, I'm not stressing about it. I didn't realize at the beginning of the year that I was going to do a show. And I also didn't realize I was going to start a business that would turn out to be a lot more successful than I thought and would require some, you know, some of my stitching time to, to keep it running. So I'm okay with the fact that I've stopped working on those, but I also really want to finish them. I'm, I'm over halfway done. All of the images have been released now. Brooke has released the last um, of those Advent Animals. And so I really want to finish them and get them all sewn up and hung on a cute little pegboard that I'm going to uh, ask my husband to make me. I don't think he knows that yet. Will you make me a pegboard for my Advent Animals when they're finished? He says, sure. <laughs> Um, I really want to get them done, so I'm going to try and get back on the, the Advent Animal train. I don't know when they'll be finished. They might not be finished by this year, but eh, life. Um, and then the last two things I really want to get back to are my Blue Bride, my Lavender and Lace conversion of the Bride. Um, I miss her. I pull her out every once in a while and look at those pretty blues, and I'm like, oh, I want to work on you again. And it's almost the end of July, which, okay. You guys will understand. You all love Harry Potter as much as I do, right? So I listen to the Harry Potter audiobooks all the time, but every year, I, I try to reread the whole series every year, once a year, which I know is probably silly, but I love it. And I will always love Harry Potter and I will always want to reread those books. And I like doing this is what I did last year I'm gonna try to do it again this year is between Harry's birthday which is July the 31st if you didn't know Harry Potter's birthday is July the 31st and the first day of Hogwarts when they catch the Hogwarts Express which is September 1st I try to read all seven books so that gives me the whole month of July or the whole month of August plus one day in July and one day in September and I try to read all seven books in that time frame I can totally do it because I can I can whip through like the first two books and two and a half days. I mean, they're, sh they're much shorter and I read fast and I love them. So I can totally do it. I did it last year and I think it's kind of fun that that's my tradition. But speaking of Harry Potter time in my year, I want to get back to my Harry Potter giant sampler. Um, I saw uh, Carrie Pemberley Woods. She posted her finish of it and it was beautiful. Good job, Carrie. Um, and I know there's a lot of people working on, a lot of people have finished it and I haven't touched mine in like six months, which is just sad. So I need to pull that back out. Um, so those are my plans. Get back on the Brooks Books An Advent Animal Wagon, um, get back to my Blue Bride and get back to Harry Potter. And those are my plans for the next few weeks. We'll see what I get to. The next thing I wanted to show you is I received a rack, um, a random act of kindness. A very sweet subscriber of mine contacted me and asked if she could send me something. And um, she told me what one part of it was. And I said, that's so sweet and so generous of you. Of course, I would love to to have that. Thank you for offering. You know, you don't have to do that, but I, I appreciate 
that feeling of wanting to share something. So thank you so much. Um, I did ask her permission and she said it would be okay for me to share what she gave and also her name. Her name is Kim. Hi Kim. Um, and so I wanted to show you what she sent me. Um, it was more than she said it was going to be. And she sent me a, a lovely little note um, with, you know, talking about why she, she gave me these things and what they're for and stuff. The first thing she sent is, you're all gonna laugh. This is my my very first Celtic lady. She sent me one of the Celtic ladies from um, Lavender and Lace. She sent me Celtic Autumn. Ooh, glare, there she is. Sorry, you can see some of the pattern, <laughs> whatever. Um, so she sent me Celtic Autumn and she was talking about how she uh, plans to, I guess she had two copies of this and so she sent me one of them and she plans on stitching the conversion um, in kind of the autumn colors and the reds and golds and greens. I haven't decided yet. I love the purples and golds, but I know a lot of people have said this, that it's not very autumn -y. It's not, it doesn't really look like fall. So I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. I do want to stitch her though. I think she's beautiful and I would love to, to stitch her someday and I'll have to decide if I'm going to do the conversion or not. But she sent me Celtic Autumn, so thank you, Kim. That was very generous and sweet. Um, then she sent me a couple little bits and bobs. Uh, this is so cute. She sent me my very first scissor fob. And this is it. It's very pretty. It's got all these colored beads and sparkly things. And then on the bottom it has a scarecrow. He's so cute. I live in the Midwest and the late summer is corn season. And so this just makes me smile because the corn fields are all getting ready to be harvested. So she sent me a little scissor fob. It's got a little lobster claw clasp to like hook on your scissors and dangles and looks pretty. I'm sure you all know what scissor fobs are, but I didn't until I started cross stitching. So there's the little scissor fob and it came with a matching frogger, which all it is, is a needle, a, a, a tapestry needle, a cross stitching needle, attached to some more of the little beads. So you can hold it in your hand, there's something to kind of grip, and a needle, and you can pull out your stitches that you've made mistakes on. I love this, this is so much fancier than just using my needle or my scissors or something. I just, it feels so refined and elegant to have like an official little frogger. And it has matching beads to the scissor fob and it has a little ear of corn. <laughs> Sorry. It has a little ear of corn dangling on the bottom so it matches with the scarecrow. And I just think it's so pretty. And it actually is surprisingly comfortable to hold. You like grip the, the little bead string and then you can pick out your stitches. So even though we all wish we would never have to frog anything, we all know that that it is not a realistic wish. So she sent me a little scissor fob and a frogger. And then the last thing she sent, and these came in such cute little pink bags, she sent me needle minders. She sent me 10 needle minders. And she said she sent these to me because these are a type of needle minder that she doesn't really like. And I'm, some of you I know agree, and actually um, I can totally understand why. They are the, they're all stuck together. They are the little, um, the, they're the, oh, I can't speak, words. The needle minders that have like a glass dome top. And so your needle doesn't sit flat and your needle tends to like spin around and do funny things. And so she said she didn't like stitching, um, she didn't like these particular kinds of needle minders. So she was gonna send them to me. She said, if you wanna pass them along or you, know, you can use them for sure if you wanna give them away. She said, whatever you wanna do with them is fine. And I don't particularly like this kind of needle minder either because of the whole spinning needle thing, but I realized I can use them as refrigerator magnets. Hello, cutest refrigerator magnets ever. And with really strong magnets that actually hold up more than like one piece of paper. Doesn't that drive you guys crazy? When you have a refrigerator magnet that you like put something on your refrigerator and it immediately falls to the floor. What is the point of this magnet? It's useless. So what I'm gonna do is use them on my refrigerator. And so, thanks Kim. I have all these cute, I have 10 new refrigerator magnets that are all so cute. So let me show you really quickly. We have some little Easter bunnies. And we have a Santa Claus. This is the Santa from the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer claymation movie, that old one. I love that. And the backs of the, you know, they, they come with this 
Ooh, they come with a second thing to uh, second magnet to be the back, and I'll just save those. I'm gonna save them and repurpose them for maybe making my own needle minders. I will have ten little magnets, so I can make five needle minders myself. So I'll I'll use them for that. So thank you, Kim. Um, carrying on, we have a shamrock appropriate for the. Irish family that we are, or at least we lay claim to the Irish side. Um, we got a snowman. He's cute. Um, we have, this one fell off. Ooh, this one's fun. It's a skull with a red dragon wrapped around it. That's kind of fun. And then another dragon. My grandmother collects dragons. That one's pretty, like, it almost looks like butterfly wings on the dragon. Um, my grandmother collects dragons and when I say that I mean that she anything that has like a dragon on it. So she has stuffed dragons, she has um, dragon puzzles, she has dragon pictures. Um, so that's kind of fun for me. That reminds me of my grandmother. We have a Jack Skellington and a cute pair of embroidery scissors. And then a jack-o'-lantern with a black cat in a witch's hat. And a little pink heart. So those are my needle minders that uh, Kim sent me. Thank you so much, Kim. I love them. They're going to make the cutest refrigerator magnets and the best, strongest refrigerator magnets ever. And then I have those 10 extra magnets to make my own needle minders. So that'll be fun. Um, so that was my lovely rack from Kim. She's a sweetheart. Um, I did get some more of my needle minders from Julie and I wanted to show them to you. Um, the first one is this, and a lot of you have this one already because I've seen it. It's a golden snitch. And that one will be going on my Harry Potter sampler whenever I finally pull it back out. Um, this one I picked just because it's so darn glittery. I'm a sucker for sparkle and they're rock candy and look at that oh my gosh the whole thing I want like earrings that look like oh that actually is kind of cute it's a little bit 80s but I love it maybe I should get a, another another pair and the magnets are strong enough I bet they'd stay on anyway so it's rock candy and it's super sparkly and I just love that. It's very summery. And then this one is very special and tender to my heart. I wasn't going to get any needle minders and this is the reason why I made this order in the first place. I saw this pop up and it warmed my heart. I just told you that my grandmother collects dragons. My grandfather, her husband, who is a very special man to me, my grandpa Will, he collects turtles and he's been collecting turtles for years and they have shelves of turtles that he's gotten from all over the world made of stone, made of wood. They have a jade turtle that they got in China. Um, so many beautiful turtles. Some are like door stops, big ones. I mean, there's turtles everywhere. And so whenever I see turtles, it reminds me of my grandfather and I saw this. It's an abalone shell turtle with little gems around the shell. And it made me think of my grandpa, who in October is turning 90 in October, still going strong. He's an amazing man. I love him very much. And it made me think of my grandpa, Will. I have a sweet story. Uh, my grandfather was a, wood, a woodworker, a carpenter, and he built a lot of the furniture in their home, beautiful furniture cabinets and tables and did all of the door frames in their house and he's really talented. He doesn't do it so much anymore because he's getting a little <laughs> getting a little up there in years and doesn't see very well but um, when I was little I used to go out in his garage which was his wood shop and I loved how it smelled in that garage. It smelled like wood chips and, and sawdust and I love that smell to this day it reminds me of him and I would sit and I would watch him work and I was out there when I was probably seven or eight and there were all these little scraps of mahogany he was doing some beautiful mahogany piece for someone and um, he had all these little pieces and I asked him if I could play with him he said sure so I was sitting on the floor playing with them and excuse me just using these little mahogany pieces I figured out a way to make a turtle a turtle out of his little mahogany chips and 
and scraps of wood, little triangles and a square and a little head thing. And I made a turtle and I showed my grandpa and he was so pleased. He helped me wood glue it and stain it and make this little wooden turtle and he still has it. He has it on his shelf with all of his beautiful, I'm gonna cry, you guys, with all of his beautiful stuff from all over the world. And he has this very rough, rudimentary little wooden turtle that I made out of his wood scraps. And um, anyway, so turtles make me happy. And that's my beautiful turtle um, needle minder. So thank you, Julie, for those. They're beautiful, I love them. Um, that's all I have for you guys. Sorry, I'm all choked up. That's all I have to show you guys. But before I go, um, I wanted to do uh, the behind the scenes tag from Jessie Marie Does Stuff because it's been really fun for me to see where everyone else does their stitching and what their setup looks like. Um, and so I'm going to, when this video stops, I'm going to take a picture of my recording setup, which is question number one, take a picture of your recording setup. It's really nothing fancy. I have, I sit on the floor in my living room. I have my coffee table in front of me and a stack of books and I put my iPhone on this stack of books and that's how I shoot my videos. Okay guys, as promised, this is my setup. My camera sits on top of those books. I put all the stuff I need on the couch or on my coffee table and I Film. That's my front window where the light comes in and that's it. Nothing too fancy. But let's go through the rest of the questions really quickly. Um, number two was how did you come up with your channel name? My channel name is Little Yellow House Crafts and I think I've said this once in one of my very first videos but I came up with it because I live in a little yellow house. I do. Our house was built in the 1950s, early 60s. It's an old little house and it's painted this beautiful like buttercup yellow and it has bright cheerful teal door and red um red accents and like gray shutters and it's just i love it we didn't paint it the landlords did and i just love it so it's little yellow house and then crafts because i love to craft so that's how i came up with my channel name um when did i post my first video for floss tube that was uh, end of June, beginning of July last year. So yay, happy one year anniversary to my channel. I can't remember the exact day, but it's been a year now, which is amazing. Um, this is my 16th video. So yeah, it's been a good year. I started a business. I got enabled to buy a bunch of stuff from you guys, which is hilarious, but you know, that's just the way it goes. Um, what do you use to record? Like I said, I use my iPhone. That was question number four, and it works great. Never had a problem with it. Um, number five, do you use a video software or do you um, record directly onto YouTube? I use a video software because I like to edit, edit my videos, which is my next um, question, which is, do you edit? Yes, I do. Um, and what software do you use? I use Windows Movie Maker. It was free. It works. It's not super fancy, but I don't need super fancy. I'm not super computer savvy, so it works for me. It's simple enough for someone like me to use it. And I'm able to edit stuff out, insert pictures, add captions. That's really all I ask for from my software. Seven, how many takes does it um, take for you to film a video? Usually just one. I don't do a lot of takes. I mean, if I make a really big mistake or if like someone knocks on my door, I'll stop the video and then start it up and continue on. But I just do one take usually. Um, what happens if things go wrong? Um, I edit it out more often than not because I do edit. If I make a mistake or I forgot something or a baby's crying, I'll stop the video and I'll edit that chunk out and then continue going. Um, how long does it take you to put up a video? Too long. <laughs> Isn't this the constant struggle? Um, to record a video and to edit doesn't take me very long. Editing, the longest part for editing is just uploading it into the software and then it maybe takes me half an hour to edit it all together and then I have to save it as a file which takes a, a minute and then I have to upload onto YouTube which takes hours. It takes probably between, depending on the length of the video, between three and six hours to upload to YouTube, which is horrible, but that's just the way it goes. So this one will probably be up late tonight. I will edit it and start it uploading and probably go to bed and it will post sometime in the night. Um, number 10, what kind of prep do you do? 
I write notes so I don't forget anything. I collect all the stuff that I want to be able to show you and put it down right in front of my face. And I'll try to put a little makeup on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't wear a lot of makeup on a normal day. Today's a Sunday. So today I went to church. So I actually made more of an effort. So it's Sundays are a good day for me to film because I don't have to go put makeup on to film. Not that I have a problem filming without makeup, but I just feel like you guys appreciate when I, you know, don't look like I just rolled out of bed. So that's my prep. Um, and I have to put the kids down for nap. That's a very important part of my prep process. Uh, number 11, do you watch your own videos? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Maybe that makes me really conceited. I don't think so. I think it's just fun. I, I'm curious to, to like watch myself on a video. It's like why you like watching your old home videos too. It's weird to like hear your voice and see your mannerisms and things. I don't know. I just think it's fun. Does that make me self-centered? Maybe. I also like watching them to review before I film the next one. So I'll go and watch the most recent video to remind myself what I showed you, what I talked about, what I said I was gonna work on, just so I don't forget anything for the next video I'm about to film. So I did watch my, my most recent video today before sitting down to film this one. Uh, number 12, what would you, is there anything you would change or enhance? What would you change? Um, honestly, the only thing I can think of would be maybe having a more professional setup might be nice some, maybe some more professional lighting so I didn't have to struggle with lighting so much but honestly if I film during nap time here I don't have direct sunlight through my front windows but it's it's nice filtered soft sunlight and it actually works really well for color um, the floor is as good a place to sit as any I I don't know I don't know that I would change much this isn't like a professional thing for me so I'm pretty satisfied with how it is um, and then 13, any tidbits or funny stories? No. Nothing really funny happens. Um, tidbits, tips, I don't think I have anything of value to tell you. I guess here's my tidbit, tips and tricks. If you've been debating whether or not to post a floss tube video, do it. Be brave. I was really nervous and felt like no one would care to watch me um, before I did my first one. And here we are a year later and I have over a thousand subscribers and I've started a business and I'm happy. Like, you have no idea what could happen. And we love seeing other stitchers because it's something we love and we love seeing other people who love it. So that's my tidbit or my tip is film a video. If you've been debating, do it and let me know so I can watch it. <laughs> That's all I have for you guys. Um, I'm gonna stop this video and start another one where I'm gonna show you my haul of magazines from my Craigslist find um, a month and a half ago, which I talked about in my last video. So I'll see you in that next video and I will see you guys probably in another couple of weeks, okay? Happy stitching, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.